Seismic PE prep number 10. Hey, if you've gone through all the videos so far, take a quick break, give yourself a little, you know, pat on the back, do, 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 toot your own horn because you've done a lot of hard work. So hopefully you're feeling more prepared for your upcoming exam. But today, we wanna know which structure soil can be classified as site class C. You have a couple of options down there and you have your beautiful figure that you see above. We have three building structures, one, two, and three. One being the tallest as you see, and they taper down as you move over to structure three. But today we're looking at the substructure, particularly the soil properties in order to classify our site so that we can continue forward with our seismic design of each one of these three structures. We know that the soils of the earth are not uniform. Each site that you build on most likely has its own unique parameters of soil conditions, different types of layers, thicknesses of layers, and properties of each one of those layers. So for our example in the figure above, we see that we have a certain amount soil classified as a dense soil. Well, what does that mean? Well, we'll get into what the classification means to become a dense soil. That dense soil layer is pretty deep. And then building two, it's less deep. Building three, it's less deep. And then below the dense soil, we have a rock layer. Again, what justifies something being classified as a rock? Well, we will be getting into that. As the dense soil layer gets thinner and thinner, you guessed it, the rock layer becomes thicker and thicker. I said today that we're not getting into the superstructure, so we don't need that criteria. We only need this stuff over here. In tandem with this figure, we have some additional properties. V sub SI for the dense soil and the rock soil. V sub SI is the shear wave velocity of the soil in units of feet per second, or if you're an SI, meters per second. They've already given us what those values are. The dense soil is 1400 feet per second and the rock is 4000 feet per second. How do we use these to determine a site class? For that, we head to a new chapter in our series here today, chapter 20 in the ASCE 716. Before we head any further, I wanna take a moment and thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. Their first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with the concepts, a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos alone. In university, I was never one to really click with my lectures, never really understanding what the problem was and why I needed to solve it. It was only after I started my professional career where I was exposed to real life problems and as an engineer was responsible for finding a solution to those problems. Learning by doing is what Brilliant is all about. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI, there's something for everybody. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash Kestava or scan the unique QR code on screen now, or head to the description of the video below and click on the link there. By using one of these three methods, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you, Brilliant, and let's get back to today's video. It's not a big chapter, there's only two pages to the thing, but there's an incredibly important table within it that will get you the answer to this problem. And that would be this table right here, 20.3-1, site classification. I unfortunately didn't have a PDF version of chapter 20, so I can't pull it up in front of you here today and show you exactly what everything is. So I've created this uh, kind of pseudo table, has all the same information, however, they look different. I repeat, they look different. So don't panic if you're in the book and you're like, where the hell is this, this table? It doesn't look anything like the one he's showing here today. Apologies for that. I'll get my hands on that PDF sometime in the near future. But ultimately what this table does is gives you three different ways in order to determine your site class based on properties of your soil below your structure. Average shear wave velocity, you can get your average field standard penetration resistance, or you can get your average undrained shear strength. And actually the one thing I wasn't able to do in Word was properly create the symbol. So it's the line is over the top for all of these. It's not to the side. We see that we've been given our uh, shear wave velocities for the two soil types below our structures. So we're gonna find ourselves in this quadrant of table right here in order to get our site class. We need to actually do one small equation that is just below this table in the ASCE 7. And that equation looks something like this. Looks a little scary, but it's actually really straightforward. And just below the equation in the ASCE 7, they give you all the definitions of the variables. So D sub I is the thickness of any layer between zero feet and 100 feet. So we're only examining 
the properties of the soil layers down to 100 feet below finished grade below our structure. V sub SI is the shear wave velocity in feet per second of each one of those layers that we may encounter below our structure. And then actually I do something kind of nice here, which was a little, um, as I was doing this problem out, uh, a little kind of confirmation that I was doing it correctly. They say straight up that this whole chunk of the equation right here, so on the new, oh God, on the numerator right here, the new, new numerator, uh, is, should always be equal to 100 because you're only examining 100 feet of cumulative soil layers. Depending on the number of layers of soil types that you have, you need to uh, run this piece of the equation for each one of those layers and the properties of each one of those layers. So if we scroll back up here today, we will start with building three and we will work our way from right to left. Pump the brakes here. Something that I just realized I made an error when I was drawing this. It's small. It doesn't change anything, especially as we're doing our calcs, but I'm going to go in red here. This is actually structure three. This is still structure two. And this is actually structure one. I reversed them in my head when I was drawing that. So sorry. So now those three structures are in the correct order for doing the calculations and relate to our four potential solutions over on the left. So apologies for that. So actually, we're going to work from left to right. We're going to start with structure three, the tallest structure, and work our way down to structure one, the shortest structure. It's 2025. I'm making mistakes all over the place already. My good golly gosh. With everything plugged in for structure three, the equation looks something like we have here. And we can do a little... Uh, check here to make sure that we're we're following the rules and we can see 60 feet plus 40 feet on the numerator equals 100 feet so we are good to go we're in order there and then on the denominator we have the first uh soil property if we scroll back up here being 60 feet of the dense soil for structure three and then below that we have the remainder of 40 feet of rock so 60 feet and then divide by V sub SI, which is the shear wave velocity for that soil type. If the dense soil is 1400 feet per second that, that we were given. Then the next is the rock layer. That's 40 feet of rock. And then the shear wave velocity of the rock is 4,000 feet per second. So you can see the denser the soil properties, the higher the shear wave velocity uh, will be. All of that reduced and calculated gets you 1892 feet per second, which gets you V sub S with the line over it, which is our average shear wave velocity. And then if we use this number and head back into our table, our very important table from chapter 20, we just uh, look in the highlighted yellow column and see where our value falls and then grab the appropriate site class based on that value. So that's going to find us, and I already have it kind of primed and highlighted for you with light orange. Um, but if I go red here, that's going to stick us right in here between 1,200 and 2,500, which is a very dense soil and soft rock. So that makes sense. That matches the dense soil that we were talking about. But that ultimately boils down to a site class of C. All right, now we need to do structure two and then one. This is simply a rinse and repeat, but just using the different thicknesses of our soil layers below each one of those structures. All that boils out to 2,295 feet Per second for the average shear wave velocity for structure two. We scroll up here so we can see when comparing that that is higher than structure three. And that makes sense because we have a thicker rock layer, denser layer underneath our structure. So our average shear wave velocity goes up. We can see that we enjoy site classes with a, um, I'm going to say a, a lower site class, but it's alphabetical. So the closer to A, the better off we are as structural engineers to design our structure. It's just better soil uh, parameters for design. 2295 still finds us in the same category. It's almost out of C beyond the 2,500 feet per second, but alas, we didn't quite make it there. So that too, although it's better, still gets us a site class of C. What about structure one? That boils down to 2,917 feet per second. So again, our average keeps on becoming a larger and larger number, which is great. It means we have better soil parameters. 
we go beyond the 2500 threshold which bumps us now into this area between 2500 and 5000 which gets us a site class of b but all right that's enough calculations here today let's go check out our final answer so we know buildings three and two have a site class of c while building one has a site class of b if we go green here that means c is going to be our final answer here today did you get it correct did you get it incorrect it's okay whether you did or you did not. Let me know in the comments down below how it went for you. Something that you were unclear on, something that I wasn't clear on. I always am trying to improve, so do let me know. This example is something that you're going to want to familiarize yourself with. Maybe you don't need to be, you know, the all-encompassing guru of chapter 20. A lot of this stuff gets into soil properties, which we often think and push off on the geotechnical engineer side of things and say, hey, we're structural, we're where steel, concrete, wood, masonry, all that kind of stuff. You just tell me I'm in charge of the structure, all the soil around it. That's your guys' gig. But for seismic design, they do want the structural engineer to be familiar with some of the procedures uh, behind site class, soil properties underneath the structure. So chapter 20, while skimpy, uh, is important. I think you're going to come across a problem like this on your exam. This is Rich with Team Kesteva. Thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for interacting with the channel as you have so far. Peace.